My name is Mystique, and I'm very happy that we did do this event, but however, when I think about the word diversity in terms of the college campus, I've learned to pretty much cringe. It's <laughs> rarely reflected in the faculty. You may see a diverse, a diverse uh, student body. I would say that may be true from a dive. As far as faculty goes, I don't think so. So I was online, and I was looking up diversity on college campuses, and of course, they uh, highlight the Missouri issues, but I found one on Harvard. Harvard is always interesting in terms of like diversity and what students do to mobilize themselves. And this is the board that I created. These were students I'm thinking in a humanities department, but they could have been elsewhere. They created this project called I2 on Harvard. And it's basically a list of things that they've heard white students say to them or that have been said while they're in these classes. And I'll read a few. And then I'm going to reflect on my experiences at Madai and how it hasn't really been diverse for me. And it just seems like a lot, quite frankly. So one student said, don't you wish you were white like the rest of us? Another student had her, another student said to another student, no, I will not teach you how to twerk. Another student had said to him, what are you? Is not, no, he said rather, what are you? And he said, that's not a cute introduction. Another student had said to him, you're basically white. This student had said to her, can you read? This student here was listening to music and he had to tell someone like, no, it's not rap. I was in line at Tops and I had the same experience where someone saw me with my headphones on and was like, oh, you must be listening to that new J. Cole. And I'm like, no, I'm <laughs> listening to Florence and the Machines. Um, this student has said to her, you're the whitest black person I know. This student said to another student, you're not blacker than me because you can rap more Jay-Z lyrics. This student over here said, I'm not playing the race card, you're just racist. This student said, in, uh, there's this big colorblindness thing that goes on where people like to say, I'm colorblind, I'm not racist. And this student said, oh, I don't see color, does that mean you don't see me? Right here, this student said, having an opinion does not make me an angry black woman. <laughs> and I want you guys to think about that too as I'm up here. Even though I really don't care about being an angry black woman, like if something needs to change, it needs to change. Madai is one of those things. So I reflected on what that means at Madai. And for me, it was being assigned things fall apart in one of my classrooms and being told that like you probably could find it in a library and you couldn't find it in a library. An important book like Things Fall Apart not being in your library is really, really ridiculous. To give credit, we were able to find it in interlibrary loan, but just having it not here on campus, that's absurd. Couldn't find Sula either. It also took the form of being a psychology class, and whenever the professor wanted to relate a psychological concept to a show, he chose Seinfeld, and everybody loves Raymond, and Breaking Bad, and um, just a bunch of shows with predominantly white cast. There was no Fresh Prince, there was no Martin, there was no Good Times, there was no Empire, there was no Blackish, just a bunch of white cast. As if we have not been drowned in that stuff all throughout our high school and middle school. We are not Shakespeare de deficient. We are not like white culture deficient. We know what that is. We've had that before. We are not ignorant of that in any way. It also took the form of being in a public speaking class and having a professor show us TED Talks. It seems like every professor here does a TED Talk. If TED ever breaks down, I don't know what professors would do. They <laughs> just die. Every professor has a TED Talk. And this professor would show TED Talk after TED Talk after TED Talk. And I'm just noticing that there's like no black presenters in this TED Talk. There's no people of color. Every TED Talker was a white person. Then, like, I don't know if she got the gist of what she was doing. At the very end, she showed a TED Talk, and it was a black person. But can you guess what the subject matter was? Prison. She made sure to go out of her way to show a black person talking about prison, not anything else. Then that's what she found to do. And this is here. I'm going to die. Not Harvard, not some other random place in Texas, not Richmond, Virginia. No, I'm going to die. It also took the form of being in another psychology class and having a professor bring in speakers to talk about 
the fields that they were in counseling. Some people were doing industrial psychology, which is something that I'm interested in. And every speaker brought in was, once again, a white speaker. And I asked, like, okay, so are you going to bring in a speaker of color? And she was just talking about how her network pretty much didn't include people of color. She didn't say that, quote unquote, but it was like, you know, I don't really know any of them. I don't really know any people like that. So another student whose name is Mel, not, she's not here anymore. She was big with Paranormal Society, but she actually reached out and found a person of color to come talk about psychology and how people in color can make it too. Uh, another example, unfortunately, was being in the student accounts office and hearing the members there talk about a student who had just had a son, and because of that, his financial aid, his financial life, rather, had been transformed, and they were just like, oh, you know, it's never anybody else's fault. They're never taking the responsibility for what they do. Just talking down about the student just in broad daylight in front of everybody. Not having any professional decorum, just talking down like, oh, that was going to happen. Uh, what else did it take the form of? Because it's happened quite just, just the fact that you're not really uh, required to buy text by black authors, that is a really problem. You, everything you read is pretty much white author this, white author that. And those are some of the ways that it's happened at Madai. So I just ask, is our faculty really diverse? Is this really a diverse university? And when we talk about diversity, who's framing the answers to that? What does that really look like? Let's not congratulate ourselves and clap about things that we have not really, sort of promises that we haven't really kept to ourselves, that we haven't made through on. And what inspired me to talk about this is because I've been listening to a lot of bell hooks lately, a lot of Kimberly Crenshaw. She's always talking about intersectionality. That's obviously the, to the uh, term that she coined. And they're always talking about the way classrooms can like talk about all these other issues, but somehow always skip over race. Like the philosophy class that I'm in. We're talking about the urban environment, but have yet had to have a question or just a text about segregation and gentrification. How do you talk about the urban environment in Buffalo or just anywhere and you don't talk about segregation? You don't talk about gentrification. How? So it's nice to be at Madai. It's great to hear you guys say these things about community and this and that, but we certainly can be doing more and we should be doing more. I do have hope. I'm glad we put this together. This is hopeful. So thank you. Thank you.